Hey there, everybody. This is 100 Visions Guy, and I want to make a video to explain why I am so happy I failed two hours ago and three hours ago on all of these. Why is that such a cool thing? That is because I have learned about Travis CI. There's Travis. He like the, almost looks like Mario. And uh, anyway, so Travis CI is a great integration that works with GitHub. And um, if you go to GitHub, they have GitHub Education, and they've got these great ways to help out educators and students um, learn about Git, but also do some awesome integration and awesome things with um, programming and whatnot. So anyway, I've been trying to teach Git in a lot of different ways, and one of the new ways I'm doing this now is through this uh, classroom.github. Now. Right here, I have. Um, let's just go to uh, let's just go to classroom.github. And if you are a teacher, you can set up classes on here where you can have assignments that you can give to students. So I'm going to go to the Century HS programming, and you're going to see a series of assignments. Each one of these are um, assignments that have what's called a unit test. Now, a unit test is. Uh, well, let's just show you what it looks like. Um, let's take a look at an answer call. In it, basically, um, what I did is I made it so that when I pushed my code to GitHub and I configured it right, I was able to have it install Python virtually and test out my program by running the unit test on a challenge. And if you look here, I've got all of these unit test errors. This is called test-driven development. And um, that's why I'm very happy that I was able to fail because I was able to automate this testing. And so you'll see here the command Python test answer call exited. So this is my little command that runs the test. Now, how did I do this? And why is that significant? Well, let me explain what's significant about it. I go to GitHub Classroom and I can create an assignment. And when I create an assignment, um, basically, I'll show you this answer call one, and we're just going to go ahead and let's go to my GitHub site, and let's look at answer. Actually, we'll look at automated alarm. Automated alarm, what you'll see here is a series of files that do different things. I have a readme file, and I have a name of my project, automated alarm, and it's alarm clock that's programmed by Python. And you basically, your job is to write this Python alarm clock that meets the requirements that we see here. It gives you sample inputs, talks about them, sample output. And then here's some examples. If you were to put in this input, you should receive this output. Okay, so with that being said, um, if you go to the automatedalarm.py, you will see there is really nothing in there. That's because this is an assignment for my students to write this function. And their job is to write the function in a way that passes all of these tests. So, and by the way, you can even have students write their own unit tests and then run them if you want to teach them how to write unit tests. For right now, I just want to them to write functions that meet the requirements that they have. Okay, so, so we have it on here. So now how do we put all this together? Okay, so the first thing you're going to want to do is you're going to want to push one of your projects through to GitHub. So let's take a look at one of the projects I'm working on. Um, I had created this and put it on GitHub, but then I decided I want each individual one to be its own assignment. So I'm just going to copy this, and we're going to talk about this one called Century Sign. So I go in here, and I'm just going to paste this in. So right now, I have this folder. It's got a PyCache folder, which happens when you run the um, when you run this test century sign. And it's got the century sign. If you look on here and you edit with idle, you'll see that it's also just some comments. OK, so we got our comments here. And this is our set of unit tests, which I have already pre-written in light of the different function. OK, so I'm not going to explain how I do the unit tests. I've done that in other videos. I want to show how I can integrate all of this in GitHub. So the first thing I want to do is I want to make this an online repository. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to right click and I can do git init here or just do git bash here. Um, so I do git bash here, you see the folder, and I'll go ahead and go through the commands. Git init initializes the folder. Okay, so that means now it's being tracked. Okay, but if I do git status, you will see that there are some files in here that are untracked. That's why they're red. Warning. Okay, so I'm going to need to track those and save a snapshot of it. 
Before I do that, I'm going to go in here and I'm going to grab my git ignore file. Now let's take a look at the git ignore file. Basically, git ignore files, I put this .ds store, which is uh, an automated thing that gets run, so that gets built sometimes, and I don't want that there. And the other one is the pycache folder. So I want to have that, and basically it's going to ignore that folder. So I'm just going to right-click, copy. I'm going to go back to here, go to Century Sign. I'm going to paste it in. It's a good idea to get your git ignore in place if there's anything you want to track. So now I'm going to do a git status again, and you'll see now I have the git ignore file. So I'm going to, and but notice the git ignore file is there, but you don't see the pycache anymore. That's because it was in the git ignore, and we're ignoring it. You want to make sure you ignore a file before you commit it, because then you have to remove it, and it's a real pain. I'm going to do a git add dot. That adds everything, and a git commit dash m, and I'll put adding initial files. Quote. All right, now I have my first snapshot, and what I want to do now is create a repository on my GitHub site. So I click new, new repository. I'm going to call this century sign. Here's your sign. All right. Now, I'm not, not going to write a description. I'm not going to initialize it with the readme. I'm not going to add a git ignore. I'm just going to create the repository. Okay, I've created it, but there's nothing here. We need to push our existing repository from the command line. So what I want to do is copy this right here. If I just click on here, you'll see it says copy. I go back here, and now it's git remote add origin. And I'm just going to paste that code. Hit enter. All right, so now I have it tracked, and so I'm going to do a git push origin master. I have to plug in my username and my password. Click OK. All right, I push it through. Let it go. Hit refresh. Bam. Now it's in here. Okay. So the first thing I want to do is now that I have this on the repository and I just have the century sign and the test century sign, I'm going to go ahead and add it to my classroom and add an assignment for it. It's this is I just learned to trial and error. This is the best method. Get it initially filed on here. Don't add anything for the Travis integration first. Go to your classroom, click manage the classroom. So I'm in Century HS Programming, and what I want to do is I want to, oh, I don't want to go, I just want to go here. There we go. I want to add a new assignment, because I want to add that Century Sign. So I click New Assignment, it's an individual. And the difference is group assignment means people are going to work together on a project. Uh, this is one where I want everyone individually to work on it. So I click it on here, and that's Century Sign, Unit Test Challenge. Ah, I did not want to do that. Dang it. All right, so we'll just go back here. we got to add it here. Fortunately, it knows to look at my repository first. It's already found it, so I click it, and I save changes. Okay, when I want a student to do this challenge, I give them this link, and they get a copy of it. Now, let me show you a student that did this before. Um, on the, I think it was the answer call. Yep, so this student right here actually tested it out. I click on here, I can see all of the files, and then later on I'll show you how I can see what the results of that student were. Okay, so we have it on GitHub, the Century Sign, so it's connected here. We have it in the classroom, and so there's just a couple more things we need to do to add it to Travis. I'm going to add a readme file first. Actually, I'm going to add the readme file later. I can add that. You don't need to see that. So, okay, so now what do we do to get it working um, on this folder? Uh, let's go, go to the folder. Now what we need to do is we need to connect it to this Travis. Now, the cool thing about Travis is let me just show you in a new browser. I'm going to open up Firefox, and I'm going to do travis.ci.org. First thing you'll see is sign in with GitHub. If you're already signed in with GitHub and you click it, it should automatically sign you up. So you just click on here, and then you can put your username and password, and you're going to tell it that you, you're going to give it permission to do what it wants to do. Um, don't worry. I don't think it'll take your firstborn. Not 100% not sure. Now, here's the deal. We're going to need two main files to get this automated. Now, notice, I haven't done any setup here. 
Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you two files I'm going to add to my Git project, and they are both in here. One is .travis.yml, and the other is requirements.txt. I'm going to copy those both. Notice how I got it on my GitHub Classroom before I put these files in. That's because this .travis.yml, the moment you push this through, it's going to try to looking for it and try to sync with it. So you want to have it tracked before you push it through. Let's take a look at it, and then we'll do that. So I'm going to open this. Uh, well, let's just double-click it and open it. All right, and on here, what you'll see is you've got language. So whatever computer programming language you have, Python, we're doing 3.5 or 3.6, so I added those. You could add others. Um, now, in the cache, we're going to run pip, and it stands for Python installation something. I forget. Anyways, this allows you to install other items. And so what this does is we put in the cache pip, and we're going to say pip install r requirements.txt. And then we're going to run a script. Now, this script, and let's take a look at requirements, first of all, before we go any further. Um, and so let me just go back to this folder. I'm going to open up requirements. Um, let's see if we can open it with Adam. And in my requirements, you're going to see just a little bit of text here. Uh, nothing. What happened to that? Okay. Did I mean to do that? Well, let's just take a look. Uh, add project folder. Dang it. Get projects. Uh, century sign. So I'm going to select this folder. Okay, now I, I can take a look at requirements. Here's requirements. There, is, there are none. But let's say we wanted uh, we needed Python to run Piperclip, or we wanted it to run Pygame. And normally you would need to install it on your computer, but it doesn't come with it. Anything you need to install as a third-party library, you can, you're going to add it here. No comments, of course. So if we want to install Pygame, we just put it like this. Okay. So just keep that in mind. Now, there are no dependencies, but I'm just going to leave it in here in case we change our mind later. Okay. So I'm going to go back here. And then, um, so we've got that all ready to go. We got the requirements. Let's look at the Travis one more time um, because let's make sure we're in the right one here. Not Sentry Sign. And you'll notice it's Test Sentry Sign, not Test Automated Alarm. So we're going to say Test Sentry Sign.py. Now, what we're doing here is we're saying Python. In other words, this is like if you're running a command line instruction, you'd say Python because that's the program that's going to run it. And then it's test century sign dot pi. And so that will tell Travis to do that. Now, there's one more step we got to do to do this right. All right, we are going to go ahead and tell Travis what we're working on here ahead of time. So I'm going to click on my repositories. And now that we're in Travis, so what we want to do is we want to click on, there's Travis. Hey, Travis. All right, so we're going to go look at, um, notice I don't see the century sign on here. I need to add that. So I'm going to click on here. Dang it, it just does not want to do what I want it to do. It's a lot easier earlier today. Okay, click repositories. There we go, there we go. Okay, so we're going to go here. Now notice we're going to look for it, and you're going to see there is no sentry sign. These are um, alphabetized. So we need to sync the account. Once we sync it, it will pop up. Wait for it. Once it's synced and it pops up, then we need to check it. Because until we check it, it doesn't know. We want to have this thing checked before we push our changes with the files on it. Okay, now we see after I synced it, I see sentry sign. Now I'm going to check it. So now it's tracking it. Okay, so now I know it's tracking. I'm going to click on here, and you're not going to see it right now. Okay, that's because we haven't pushed it through. So now we're going to go back here. I'm going to do a git status. We're going to see that we've added Travis in requirements. So we're going to go ahead, get add dot that adds everything, get commit dash m adding files for Travis dot ci. All right, now we're going to push and use our username. I might have got that wrong. Let's see. Nope, I got it right. So you see what's happening here? Notice it pauses a little bit longer. It took 
just a little bit longer. So we're going to go over here and, oh, look, there it is, adding files for Travis CL. So it already saw that. And you see how it just automatically popped it up? So I'm going to click on here, and you can watch that thing build. So I'll just let that run for just a little bit. In just a moment, it'll pop up. All right, take a look, clone. So we got a little thing going on here. It's cloning, setting up, build cache version. There it is. There are all of my, it ran all of my unit tests and I failed. And yes, I have another fail and I'm excited about it. And the reason why I'm excited now is that students will fail until they succeed. And I want them to succeed. So I go back to the Google GitHub classroom and let's just see what happened with this laser cannon one. I forget how I had to do this. I think I got to go back here, my repositories. Okay, so what I did is I clicked on the little plus sign. Let me show you. So a little plus sign. Now I can see here's my organization, Century HS Programming, repositories two. Guess what? There's that laser cannon one. See how it has a check on here? So as other students do this, I can add them on here. So this is the independent. I had a student just test this out. And the student, all the student did was just grab it and then make a simple change, push it through. And I can see that that student has not passed the test either. So the nice thing now is this automates this running of the unit test. And all I have to do is give the students the assignment have them push and as soon as they push I can get that report by just going back here clicking on here going to my organization and finding checking anyone that I have to test and then I just click on the link and I got it right there alright thanks for watching stay tuned for more